Economically, the state of Florida is currently the worst state to live in in the United States, far more complicated than California or New York. That is the reality of life in the state of Florida right now, where the cost of living has become the most uncomfortable of anywhere in the United States. And on this particular day, we went Uber driving in the streets of Fort Myers, Florida, and this is what we saw. Uber driving in Fort Myers, Florida. This week I went down to Fort Myers to do some Uber driving. I got three rides and it was probably one of the worst days for Uber driving that I have ever had. Uber driving in Fort Myers during the summer is brutal. So let's talk about the passengers we had, how much money I made, and what it was like to Uber drive in Fort Myers. Now, despite the fact I started Uber driving at 6 in the morning in some areas in the map having a surcharge, I didn't really get a single ride until about 6.52 a.m., almost an hour sitting idle in Lehigh Acres waiting for a passenger. When I finally got a passenger, they were going from downtown Fort Myers all the way to 41 in college. Literally, I ended up having to drive through downtown Fort Myers, traffic congestion, all that, to get this passenger on this ride that took 23 minutes and only paid $12.19, and there was no tip included. Now, the conversation hits different because I actually lived and worked in the Fort Myers area for over 20 years, so the person was a local and I'm a local, so we were able to have some great conversations about the area. A little bit more in depth than what I normally get now that I live in Sarasota and Brainton, an area I'm less familiar with. Here we are driving down Fowler. Now, the Uber GPS wanted me to be on US 41, but there's only one bridge working to cross in the Cape Coral right now because of some road construction. It would have been a horrendous idea. So, we're driving south on Fowler, heading towards college. 7.5 miles, 23 minutes, $12.19. And that includes the fact that Uber charged this person a $3.50 charge. So, very insignificant for a first ride. Now, the conversation with this particular passenger ended up going towards her dealing with racism in some places she's lived and how it's affected her life and how it's made her life very difficult. You know, when you have a passenger and you start a conversation, you usually talk about the places you've lived before. And I said Alabama, it got the dice rolling on her end to talk about some of her experiences as she's lived. And of course, uh, we're going to keep all that confidential, but we had a very deep conversation about racism. Interestingly, this wasn't the only conversation on this topic that we had in Fort Myers. It seems like inequality is really on the minds of people living in Fort Myers. And uh, regardless of the race or racial background, it seems like it's affecting everybody at this point. And today, racism isn't just affecting minorities. Um, the white population, in particular the poor whites, are dealing with racism as well. And it's starting to affect their lives. So racism used to be a thing that you know a few years back was only affecting minorities. But today, racism affects everybody regardless of race. Perhaps in the place where you live, it's not really relevant, but in certain places, it is definitely affecting everybody. It's not just minorities that are being affected by racism today. It's everybody. And she almost tried to explain to me, she didn't think that I would believe that as a white person, she's experienced racism. But I do understand it because, again, I lived with my wife, who's American, in Alabama, and we definitely experienced racism like that. So, um... I told her, you don't have to explain to me that part of it. I get it. I've experienced it. But a lot of white Americans simply are still not accepting that racism is a real thing because maybe they live in a predominantly white community and they're white, so they don't really get to see interactions with other groups and, and how it all goes down. But that was the relevant conversation with this passenger and other passengers as well. And a lot of times it just takes being in an interracial relationship to really start to understand what the other side goes through or how other people perceive you when they see you as somebody who's different. So it's hard to believe that in the United States in the year 2024, this is still a thing, but it really is. And it does affect people's lives. People get mistreated. They get disowned by their families. A lot of times people even end up being uh, victimized by law enforcement or they're just put in marginalized situations that makes their living outcome difficult. And now that I think about it, 
all three passengers on this particular day were having conversations about how racism is affecting their lives. Very interesting. And considering that our passengers were all kind of of different demographics, it goes to show that it's affecting everyone. Okay, so our second passenger was picked up in a residential area off of Palm Beach Boulevard, and they were heading to downtown Fort Myers. Now, interestingly, this passenger as well started to talk to me about how racism has affected their lives and the lives of other people around them. This particular person of a Hispanic background told me that in the city of Fort Myers, she feels very uncomfortable. I'm not going to say her particular demographic, but she is a white Hispanic. In other words, even me as a Hispanic, when she got in the vehicle, I couldn't tell if she was white or Hispanic. We got Puerto Ricans, Cubans, Colombians, Venezuelans, a lot of white Latinos here in this area. So I couldn't really tell by her name or her appearance if she was white or Hispanic. In fact, when she got in the vehicle, I put on a country playlist thinking she was American. And she was the one that started talking to me in Spanish. Now, interestingly, this passenger had an experience where they moved to a small town in Michigan as a Hispanic family. And when they would go out in public to stores, people would verbally assault them and tell them to go back to their country and do other things of that nature while they were out and about shopping in this small town in Michigan. Interestingly, my wife grew up in a small town less than an hour from there. I've been in the vicinity of this small town in Michigan. I spent a lot of time there because my wife grew up in that area. My wife was never brought up that way. So it's not that everybody in small town in Michigan is like that, but if there's a hundred people in that town and one percentage of them, one single person starts to do this to people that move to that town, then the people that move to that town are eventually going to find it an unwelcoming place. It's not that every single person in Michigan is unwelcoming. In fact, I've spent a lot of time in Michigan and I haven't felt that. But these people move to a small town somewhere in central Michigan outside of Grand Rapids. And this is the experience they had. They had to move out of the small town in Michigan because they were being harassed when they went to stores. Now, this is a Monday morning in Fort Myers. Look at how vacant and desolate this area looks. Businesses are run down. People are upset. I don't really see how people can make a living in Fort Myers. When I mean, you look at the cost of living and how bad the job market is in Fort Myers, I mean, just looking down the strip, you can see businesses that were open two or three years ago are closed now. Business centers that were packed a few years ago today are empty. This is a Monday morning in Fort Myers. If you guys remember, I used to make videos in this neighborhood, and this neighborhood was packed. Businesses were packed. It was a busy area. But you drive through here now, and you can see all these parking lots are empty. Guys, this is a Monday morning. It's been sad to see how much Fort Myers has declined in the last few years. It's almost starting to remind me of like Baton Rouge, Louisiana, where you get off in the high, off the highway into these neighborhoods, and as soon as you enter the neighborhood, you're like, wow, you can visibly appreciate how these areas are in decline. It's so sad to say it, but that's what the city of Fort Myers looks like. It looks like a place that's in decline. This ride paid $7, and it took 16 minutes. It was exactly five miles long. On the left is an apartment complex. When I moved back from Alabama, we looked at an apartment complex right here in this building on the left, and we actually thought about buying a unit here. It was something like $100,000. The storm surge actually did a lot of damage to this building. So to the right of us, you can see that bridge. Underneath that bridge is the Caloosahatchee River. Fort Myers had a four-foot storm surge from Hurricane Ian, and this building on the left suffered a lot of damages from the hurricane. Imagine if we had bought in this building. As you can see now, it's completely vacant. It's falling apart. And whoever owned, I don't know what's going to happen to these people because it looks like the building is condemned. So I don't know if the people that bought these properties, if they're getting paid out for it or if they're going to get a cut when they sell the entire building. I'm not sure what is going to happen to these people, but they bought these condos on the left thinking they were going to be close to downtown Fort Myers. And now this building, you can see the mold, it's abandoned, it's decrepit. 
what's going to happen to the people that purchase those properties? You know, because it could have been me, but something told me it was a bad idea to buy that. I had the money cash. I could have bought it cash, and I decided not to buy it. Today, it's sitting vacant and abandoned, and I just can't help but wonder what happened to the people that own those units and are they getting any compensation for the properties they bought now that the building is sitting there abandoned because it was a condo a while back okay so we arrive in downtown fort myers now a local news report mentions that businesses in downtown fort myers are struggling heavily because there simply isn't enough foot traffic. There are not enough people in downtown Fort Myers and the businesses are struggling. But what I notice is that it is paid parking and that there's actually people going around with a ski mask giving people tickets. So they have like a parking meter person and this person's actively going around giving people tickets and that person is wearing a ski mask to conceal her face and her person because she knows that people are going to take videos and photos of what she's doing. So that's the scenario in downtown Fort Myers. Paid parking, despite the fact that nobody's going to their downtown, they're still trying to charge people to go there. But even worse, they actually have somebody wearing a ski mask, going around giving people tickets and checking every single car. Like this white car right here was getting a ticket when I walked back. So we just see how... Despite the fact downtown clearly looks like a ghost town, it's absolutely vacant. There's no customers. The city is focused on giving tickets to the few people who actually did go to downtown Fort Myers. And boy, they're just not learning their lessons, are they? There's also a recent issue with somebody who bought a building right here in downtown Fort Myers. And they painted the building without pulling a permit. And then the city went in and took the building from the people because they had actually painted a historic building without a permit but there's no doubt that these businesses are suffering i mean this is noon in downtown fort myers and it's empty on this particular trip we also took a ride all the way down the fort myers beach and we're going to talk about a few things that are happening there as well along the same lines which is basically nobody's there but they're finding ways to make it even more expensive despite the fact they need to be giving people incentives to go to these places they're really not learning they're not using their brains too well in fort myers right now lucky for me i was able to get a passenger leaving downtown fort myers now this passenger didn't really interact with me at all because she was busy having a phone conversation for the entire 23 minute ride that she was there she was on the phone now we picked her up in downtown fort myers and we dropped her off off of san carlos boulevard heading towards fort myers beach so i figured since we're already heading towards fort myers beach let me go into fort myers beach and see how things are doing her ride was almost 12 miles long and only paid 12 dollars so about a dollar per mile none of these three people that we picked up in fort myers tipped and all three of them were females now the last passenger was on the phone and i hate this because it doesn't give me an opportunity to listen to my own music i can't talk to the passenger it means that i have to sit there and listen to their phone conversation that i'm not interested in hearing because they're not giving me any other option if the passenger's on the phone you have to turn off the music you can't talk to them you can't listen to music you're stuck on this 23 minute ride listening to their conversation and unfortunately you do have to listen to it because you're there and there's no way around it the conversation revolved around workplace discrimination and the types of people that were getting the jobs weren't the most skilled people they were the most uh white people so again the problem in fort myers is that every single person that I dealt with was on the topic of how racism is affecting their lives. We had a black passenger, a white passenger, and a Hispanic passenger, and all three of them were dealing with a situation that was, was on their minds. I'm not the one that starts these conversations. I'm just the driver. But the last person didn't even talk to me, but I could overhear her conversation about workplace discrimination and how difficult it is even though she's highly skilled to get those jobs because people aren't looking at your skills and qualifications they're looking at something less important now even on the worst day uber driving if i end up on anna maria island or i end up 
on Siesta Key or Lido Key, even on the worst day Uber driving, you will get a passenger on the islands because they're full of tourists. Well, not on Fort Myers Beach, San Carlos Island. We literally drove around the island, wasting time, trying to get passengers, and I got zero passengers in Fort Myers Beach. That should just give you an idea of how bad Uber driving is in the Fort Myers area when even on the island, you cannot get passengers. On the island, in the afternoon, on a clear day, there were still no passengers on Fort Myers Beach. That right there should just give you an idea of how bad things are in Fort Myers when even on the island, there's no traffic for Uber passengers. If I went to Lido Key, Anna Maria Island, Siesta Key, any of the islands up this way, or even St. Petersburg Beach, you would have passengers, not in Fort Myers. Things here are really looking bad. Now, this area is still recovering from the impacts of Hurricane Ian. You can tell that entire buildings are gone. They had a 14-foot storm surge. The water looks disgusting. It's a brown, nasty, mucky-looking water. You come up here to the beaches in Sarasota, and the water is crystal clear. Despite the fact there is a struggle for tourists, despite the fact the water clarity is absolutely destroyed since Hurricane Ian, despite the fact this whole area is really struggling, couldn't even get an Uber passenger, they're actually talking about putting a toll road to Fort Myers Beach that will be around $15. Now, most of the people that work on Fort Myers Beach don't live on the island. They commute from Fort Myers or Lehigh Acres or Cape Coral. Jobs on the island pay around $15 an hour, $16 or $17 if you're experienced. So if somebody's working a eight-hour shift on the island, two of those hours are going to go simply to pay a toll road to get them on the island. And keep in mind that during the winter, the commute from like Lehigh Acres to Fort Myers Beach has taken me one hour and 45 minutes each way during season when there are snowbirds. It simply is a place that continues to choke out the poor. Doesn't matter if you're Qualified. It's not your qualifications that matter when you go for a job in Fort Myers. First of all, it's your race. Central Americans, Cubans, Haitians, these people are living in Fort Myers not because they want to be in Fort Myers, because at least, despite the discrimination, they're able to dominate some sectors of the economy by sheer numbers. Central Americans control the drywall and the finishing Cubans control dump trucks. Haitians have hospitality as well as uh, hospitals. These immigrant groups control sectors of the economy. And because they have a show court on some sectors of the economy, they're able to have jobs. In the case of dump truck drivers, what Cubans do is if it's a white guy or a black person starts driving a dump truck, they're going to start getting into fights with people. They're going to start. They won't get tickets. Uh, they might get flat tires, they might have their vehicles vandalized, they might outright just have their vehicles stolen. But the end of the day is that in Southwest Florida right now, every nationality controls a different sector of the economy, and they have to fight for this sector of the economy. I know with dump truck drivers, for example, if you're a Cuban, you get into the dump truck business, you're going to be okay. But if you're another nationality and you try to drive a dump truck in the Fort Myers area, the Cubans are going to go after you. They're going to start damaging your vehicle. All the people who have control of the tickets, they may not give you enough rides. They're going to make your life just about difficult. The few rednecks that have dump trucks, they have to work with Cubans in some way or another. And that's kind of the way things work in Fort Myers. You know, these nationalities that are here, they control a sector of the economy, but it's by brutal force that they have the ability to have certain jobs for their communities. And that's really the thing in the United States right now is that you have a race war and, and the labor force, it's, it's literally a race war over jobs. And, you know, the blacks control some sectors of the economy and so on and so on. Uh, recently, like the landscaping jobs used to belong to illegal immigrants. Now a lot of blacks are doing that work. So there's a lot of uh, racial tension in the workplace. 
And you can see it's just dealing with your passengers on Uber, how people, their conversations revolve around the challenges they're facing. And it doesn't matter if you're skilled, it doesn't matter what you have, you have to politic race to get jobs in the Fort Myers area right now. Socially, you don't have that prejudice, but you do have it in the workplace. And well, at the end of the day, in Fort Myers right now, things are not looking good. There's still a lot of hurricane destruction that hasn't been cleaned up. The tourists are gone. The water clarity is destroyed. And local government, instead of making things easier, lessening restrictions and giving people incentives to visit the Fort Myers area, they're doing the complete opposite. Everyday things are more expensive, more complicated, and that makes life harder ultimately for the working class people because the tourists are able to subsidize these expenses. I mean, they're traveling, but how do the people that are full-time residents manage with a $15 toll to get on the island? Despite the fact that these changes are detrimental to the economy and the community, they keep doubling down on their efforts to please the ultra wealthy and make life more difficult and more challenging for the regular average class person. And this was also a topic of conversation with the three passengers that I had to some degree, which is basically the fact that every single day life gets harder and harder for the average middle class American, but more convenient for the ultra wealthy. Compared to the Sarasota and Bradenton areas, Uber driving in Fort Myers is significantly less profitable. Tips are almost non-existent in this area, as most of the people you're dealing with are nothing more than commuters. And the overall mood and vibe of the passengers wasn't a positive one. Everybody was kind of scrambling to do something. Everybody's chasing after the wind, just trying to get their lives in order, either on the phone with people trying to resolve issues or workplace disputes, etc., etc. Everybody that I dealt with on this particular day was kind of battling life in some way or another. And that right there is Uber driving in the Fort Myers area. I was shocked to find out that not even on Fort Myers Beach, I was able to get passengers. You would expect that on Fort Myers Beach on the island, you would get passengers, but it's clearly not the case. Things in Fort Myers are really looking bad. On this Uber drive through Fort Myers, I remember the many reasons why I'm glad I left this area. From the discrimination in the workplace to the traffic congestion throughout the city, as well as the abysmal economical situations, I don't really miss too much of Fort Myers. What I did enjoy, of course, is the beautiful green grass, the palm trees, the mango trees, and all of the beautiful vegetation beautiful gardens that people have and of course i took the opportunity to visit family and friends that i have down in fort myers area since i was already there and that was kind of a great thing as well but overall where we're driving in fort myers definitely sucks there's not a lot of money to be made especially now in the summer when all the snowbirds and tourists are absolutely far away the locals struggling to make ends meet and dealing with the complications of life in a state that every day is more expensive.